beyond the veil of our comfortable reality, where the whispers of the past cling to the present, lie stories that challenge the very essence of our understanding. Stories that lurk in the darker recesses of human history, waiting just beyond the reach of our consciousness. Today, I invite you to step into a world where the line between the unthinkable and the real is blurred. A world shrouded in the mists of Tasmania's most remote landscapes. In the heart of this untamed wilderness, there lies a place known to few, but feared by many. A place called Black Bob's. Here, in an old farmhouse, hidden from the prying eyes of society, lived a family. A family enshrouded in mystery. It all began with a simple yet chilling revelation made by a man, whom we'll call Robert, as he stepped out from the shadows into the small flicker of civilization. His words, seemingly innocuous, would soon unravel a tale so twisted, so deeply disturbing, that it defies the realm of belief. Journey with me, dear listeners, as we delve into the depths of this harrowing story. A tale of horror, secrets, and a legacy so bizarre, it will haunt your thoughts long after our tale ends. Are you ready to uncover the truth behind the family of Black Bobs? Well, let's begin. Tucked away deep in the Tasmanian wilderness is an isolation that almost defied description, where a group of true bushmen settled in an area now intersected by the Lyle Highway, which opened in 1932, many years after the family first established themselves. Back then, there were no man-made roads into the isolated wilderness, only bullock tracks that were all but impassable for much of the time owing to yearly heavy rainfall, snow at times, and even ice in the middle of summer. Life was as tough as it could possibly be on this inhospitable frontier of civilization. Yet these hardy bushmen kept mainly to themselves and weren't partial to strangers or government officials dropping in from what they considered the outside world. The family, reclusive and shrouded in mystery, lived in an old decrepit farmhouse that seemed to mirror their own twisted existence. While the facts are often lost in the passage of time, a recent owner of the property undertook renovations claimed to have removed six layers of carpet that had been fitted over the years, revealing bloodstained floorboards marked by bullet holes. Now we can't help but wonder how these remnants of the past got there. They would go on to say there was a haunting presence in the home, suggesting an Aboriginal curse of some sort, and the decision was soon made to sell up. But to understand this mysterious history, we'll have to reach back to the early 1900s. Robert, the man who casually revealed he'd buried his parents in his backyard, was just the tip of the iceberg in this family's bizarre narrative. The police, upon hearing Robert's chilling confession, were compelled to investigate just what was going on in the fringes of the frontier living. Mind you, this was a time when record keeping was scarce by modern standards. People would be born and one day pass away in these remote localities, simply buried on the property without mention to officials. But just because these sort of things happened, it didn't mean the police were all right with it. Looking into the matter, they found that indeed Robert had buried his parents in the backyard, just as he claimed. However, what was more disturbing was his nonchalant attitude towards the entire affair. He simply insisted that his parents had died of natural causes and saw no reason to report their passing. The officers, perhaps stunned by his indifference, simply took his statement and educated him on the requirement to report any future deaths and it seemed as if the matter was closed from there. However, this was not the end of Robert's macabre dealings. A few years later, he reappeared, this time at the police station with a large sack over his shoulder containing the lifeless body of his wife. Acting on the previous conversation with police and fearing repercussions for burying her as he had his parents. But as previously described, getting to town from the remote isolation of Black Bob's settlement was no easy task. There were no vehicles or decent tracks, so under the power of two feet and a heartbeat, Robert walked the remote landscape, but burdened by the weight of the body in the sack, he decided to lighten the load, drawing his bush knife and proceeding to gut his dead wife, dropping the weight of her organs before continuing on his way to town. It makes you wonder even more about how this guy lived, how the isolation had somehow shaped his morals and behaviours in such a way that would contrast with the rest of society. The policemen on duty that day Robert arrived at the station were no doubt stunned to receive this body in a sack from this wild bushman. And as Robert confessed to this macabre act, he let slip a detail that sent alarm bells ringing through the policemen. His daughter had assumed the role of mother in the family, a revelation that hinted at something deeply unsettling within the household. So next day, with a sense of foreboding in the air, the police, accompanied by a social worker, 
ventured to the family's home, and what they found there was beyond comprehension. The home, a three-room structure, was a living picture of neglect and horror. There were about 16 people living there. The adults occupied one room, the teenagers and children another, and the third served as a bleak living area, echoing the despair that permeated this place. Within these walls, the tangled web of the family's relationships unraveled, revealing a chilling truth. Several children were the product of incestuous relationships, and this was a continuing way of life, with two of the girls, one believed to be about age 14, and the other 20, both visibly pregnant. The social worker, appalled by the conditions, advised Robert to separate the young boys and girls, who were all sleeping together in the same big bed space. It was apparent this family coexisted like one big soup of genetic reproductive material. But her words fell on deaf ears as Robert's solution was simply to install a grotesque barbed wire fence, bisecting the house and bed to keep them apart. So do you believe isolation can significantly alter a person's morals and behaviours? Let's discuss this in the comments. Now amidst this chaos, a young boy, covered in hair and chained to a well-worn tree, stood out as a particularly harrowing sight. One local community member previously wrote to the council, complaining that the boy was treated worse than a pig, stating all he had to eat was two or three potatoes, which had been bored with the skins on in an old frying pan, but her plea for help was either lost or ignored. For Robert, this was a matter to be managed by the family, just like the unreported burial of his parents, claiming the boy's confinement was a desperate measure to prevent him from having intercourse with the younger children. So this poor soul would often be left for prolonged periods of solitude, or at times put to work around the farm, using his chain to gather and collect firewood, which he would drag back to the farmhouse. But despite all efforts to control the boy, it would often become too hard for the family to manage, resulting in frequent stays at the nearby Willow Court, Australia's oldest continually run asylum. This place lived up to all the horrors you could imagine. Solitary confinement, isolation tanks, cold water therapy, bloodletting. Placing him in this sort of environment between periods of being chained up at home, it's not hard to understand why the boy's behaviour remained an unchanged and enduring fixture well into adulthood, forming much of the law surrounding the Black Bob's settlement. Incidents involving firearms were also known to occur at Black Bob's, including a shooting between cousins, resulting in the survivor sustaining multiple gunshot wounds, only to have the murder charge dismissed by the court, with the jury finding the details of the surrounding argument failing to substantiate a guilty verdict. Then there were the newspaper reports of a gunshot suicide occurring in one of the farm trucks and even an incident involving hospitalisation of one of the boys after his father gave him a blast with a shotgun. Eventually, the Black Bob settlement grew such a nightmarish reputation that parents from surrounding communities would threaten to take their misbehaving children there. Your mother and I will not put up with this sort of behaviour, Gary. If it happens again, we will send you to live at Black Bob's. And common campfire stories of disappearing travellers would be told on the backdrop of Black Bob's. Unfortunately, incidents such as this are often downplayed over time, but the facts are compelling and widely reported, as found in my research which identified countless court hearings for incest in Tasmania, with the scale only becoming apparent after the late 1800s when the law was introduced declaring it illegal. The events that took place at Black Bob's would inspire the 2008 movie Dying Breed, becoming solidified in Tasmania's folklore and the state's reputation throughout the country. The family in Black Bob's, a mere footnote in Tasmania's history, serves as a grim testament to the unseen tragedies that can unfold in the most isolated corners of the world. Do you have any local legends or family tales that are shrouded in mystery? Feel free to share them with our community here in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want more like it, let me know by hitting the like button and subscribing. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you got something out of this story, and I'll catch you next time.